from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE Conversation here in the Palo Alto CUBE studios. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We're here at Dave Nudy, who's the head of channels for Open Systems. Open System just recently launched their partner network in 2019. Dave, welcome to the Cube Conversation. Thank you, John. Good to be here. So, security obviously is the hottest area. We've been covering it like a blanket these days. It's only getting better and stronger in terms of number of players and options for customers, but that's also a double-edged sword. There's more options more for customers. Um, and security problems aren't going away. They're just getting more compounded. Uh, it's complicated global marketplace, global scale, mm -hmm. regional clouds on-premise no surface area. We've had these conversations with you guys uh, a lot and it's super important, but the opportunity to deliver solutions with channel partners has become a huge thing at Amazon Reinforce. We had a big conversation what that even looks like. It's a new market opportunity for security players. You guys are forging there. Tell us about your partner's channel, just launched. Give us a quick overview. Yeah, I have a growing smile as you talk about the complexity uh, of the space and how difficult it can be because we're the ones that eliminate that complexity and make it very simple. And for our partners that we've been engaging with, uh, I joined the company just over a year ago and we began, we began laying the groundwork of transitioning from a direct sales model to a partner only model. Um, and you fast forward to where we are today and we've already made that 180 degree turn uh, and are working exclusively through partners uh, throughout North America and executing around the world in that way. Uh, what's exciting for the partners is that you know, they have uh, a new supplier in the portfolio in the form of open systems that while it is a new name to them, is anything but new in experience and execution. It might arguably be one of the more seasoned suppliers in their entire portfolio they have today. And it is opening doors and breaking down barriers to entry in a number of security categories that for years they've been on the outside looking in trying to, to figure out how can I participate in these areas and how can I really unify a conversation uh, around value for my customers that I am the trusted advisor to and, and those are the exciting you know, networks of hundreds and thousands of trusted advisors uh, out there that we're engaging with today. You know, the security space is interesting. It's changing a lot. It's not just um, the one supplier, multiple suppliers. There are now hundreds and thousands of suppliers of something to sec the security market. There's a lot of venture capital being funded for startups. You've got customer spending money. So there's a lot of spend and activity flowing, money flowing, huge value creation opportunity. Yet customers are also looking at the cloud technologies as a disruptive enabler of how to deal with new things, but also they're looking at their supplier relationships right now. They're evaluating, you know, who do I want to do business with? They don't want to get another tool. They don't want a new thing. They don't want to get more and more sprawl. Mm -hmm. You guys have been open system and very successful with word of mouth customer growth. Your CEO and I talked about that in the last interview. It's like, you guys have been getting a lot of wins, mm -hmm. classic word of mouth, good product offering. So you have success on the product side. Yeah. As you go into the channel and enable a, the, the people at the, in front of the customers, every day mm -hmm. to bring a solution to the table. What's the value proposition to the partners? Because they're fighting to be relevant. They want to be in front of the customers. The customers want their partners as well. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity for the people in, the, in, in front of your customers through the channel is big. What's the value proposition? Establishing, establishing trust with the channel is critical. Uh, for years they've had uh, you know, solutions that roll into the portfolio that were you know, written in a conference room a year and a half ago and, and they're only selling off of PowerPoint slides. And now you're coming in with open systems and you have over 20 years of experience, you know, accumulated uh, maturity and automation into, into a platform uh, that they very rarely see that type of door opened up for them. So when they lean in and they really start asking questions about, about open systems, it, we really check, check off boxes in a fantastic way for our partners. Uh, you talk about vendor sprawl and, and complexity and, and it all boils back, you're exactly correct, to, to the in, you know, embracing of a cloud and you know, that, that diversity of application origin, the diversity of the users trying to access those corporate resources wherever they happen to be hosted and how do I unify a strategy and it's resulted in what is not uncommon having to engage 30, 40, 50 different vendors and then trying to unify that environment, it, it, you know, let alone the problem that you can't hire the people to go and do it anyway. Yeah. There's, a, yeah. there's a negative unemployment issue in IT security categories today. So 
you know, the, there's a very, very few, fortune few that have the ability, the bench, the depth, the resource to, to do that, and an even fewer number of people who can, who can lead an enterprise down that path. And then you turn the corner and we're usually there's this tug of war between agility and security. Then if I'm really agile, it means I'm, I'm compromising security, or if I'm super secure, I'm going to be as slow as a sloth and doing anything. And then you have open systems sitting in the middle who says that's not necessarily the case. You can have world-class deployment in an agile platform where all that complexity and service chaining and unification is handled for you, um, and, and that really is, is, is mind-boggling, and I'll tell you, it's a whole lot of fun uh, to demonstrate it. You know, we, Dave, we talked to a lot of customers, uh, end user customers through our media business, CIOs and now CISOs, mm -hmm. uh, and they're all, they're all kind of working together. They have partners, they have partners they've worked with for many, many years, from the old days of buying servers and racking and stacking them to software, to applications, but now the touch points for services are those traditional suppliers, mm -hmm application developers, but security is being bolted in everywhere. So almost all services need security. That's mm -hmm. essentially what the main message with cloud is. So that gives a service opportunity for you guys, for partners to enable you guys in there. Right. As a partner, if I'm a partner of open systems, what do I get? Because I want to make my, I want to keep my customer. Mm -hmm. I want to deliver security. What do, I, what do I talk to my customer? What's the pitch that I can give as a partner to the customer to ensure that they're going to get what they need from open systems. What I tell our partners is that we should be the services conversation that you lead with. Uh, there, there are a lot of other options out there and even if you don't mention it by name, if you approach the conversation in an open way with a customer with the mindfulness of the, of the wide net of capabilities and value that you're able to execute on with open systems, it gives you your strongest footing. And one of the big problems, and, and you mentioned it, is that so often for years, these technology conversations have been siloed and isolated, and that always creates problems. I had talked to a partner who works their way downstream on an SD-WAN conversation, and at the very end they say, this looks great, we just have to get it passed by our security team. And the wind falls out of everybody's yeah. sails because that should have been part of the conversation all along. Um, or vice versa, starting from a security conversation, and now I've got to get the network team to sign off on it. Um, the open systems really comes with a model that says you know, all those viewpoints need to be in the room at the same time. That's how you, you execute and, uh, and that's how you unify an environment so that you're not you know, running into those bottlenecks later on. It's just, it's madness, it needs to be simpler. We were talking before we came on camera about uh, what it means to be disruptive and valuable to partners and to customers. And you mentioned convergence of capabilities and managed services. Huge. What do you mean by that? I mean, I get convergence of services, we talk about all the time from industrial yeah. IoT, we've been doing some segments on mm -hmm. that to managed services, people get what that means. What do you mean by convergence of services and managed services with respect to security and open systems? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, convergence is, you know, we all carry one in our pocket, you know, so how many people carry a separate GPS device with a separate, you know, digital camera with a separate phone and a separate, you know, converging technologies um, it just simplifies my environment and oftentimes there's a viewpoint of uh, I'm compromising in certain areas that, that if, I, if I break everything out myself, I, I can probably do it uh, better off myself. And in some cases that's absolutely true um, when you look at how Open Systems has taken a very diverse set of services and, and network and security categories and unified it into a single platform. You know, we've taken, if you will, we've taken that stack of boxes and we've turned it into one by building a managed services platform that, that's delivered as a service. But what we've layered on top of it is the ability to manage it for our customers. And I talk about modern managed services. It's very different. You know, before managed services was, I'm just too incapable to do something myself, um, you know, so I need somebody else to do it. I, I, when I talk to a partner, I like pointing out that I don't try to find somebody too dumb to do the things we do, and, and they have to rely upon us. No, our best customers are very forward-leaning because they realize that the automation that we've accumulated over 20 years, that where you know 85 to 90 percent of our you know detected incidents are handled by AI automation and machine learning, and the type of monitoring automation that we have at the edge, and you look, the engine and the team of 115 you know level three plus engineers that are executing on our customers' behalf is we're a force multiplier for our end customers it, to an ability that they will never achieve on their own. They'll never build it on their own. So, um, you know, those are the two, I think two of the biggest pillars in disruption are convergence and managed services. And they are two enormous checkboxes uh, for open systems where it's hard to find someone more 
experience in that um, than the team at Open Systems. And those are realities that the customers are dealing with, but also the other reality on top of that to make it even more complicated and better for you guys and partners is you have more surface area to deal with. So the AI and the automation really play into the hands of, on the delivery side. So if I'm a mm -hmm. partner, I don't, I don't have to, I mean, I'm standing up yeah. open systems, it's working. Yeah. Right? So. You can't just develop that in a conference room. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's something that's accumulated over yeah. time. That's what comes with experience. And, um, and I usually really lean heavily into our maturity and our experience. We're in 183 countries um, with customers today. Uh, we have a 98% retention rate, a 58 you know, NPS score. When I show the monitoring portals, the visibility tools, the maturity, and what has been developed isn't just open systems, you know, stubbornly telling the world what they need and should be doing. It's actually a very aggressive two-way conversation with our existing customers and their guidance yeah. telling us, this is what we want, what we need to see, what we need to be able to pull, and what we need your help in enforcing. I, I met with a customer in Pacific Northwest and he, he dropped a line on me that was terrific. He said, I'm looking for a partner that can tell us the questions we should be asking that we haven't and the technologies we should be evaluating that we haven't looked at yet. Um, and I told him I was going to steal that line, and I'm, I'm using it here today, All right. um, because that is a, an absolutely brilliant uh, description of exactly the type of customer experience that you know, we expect to deliver from open systems to our customers. So if I'm a rep, I'm a person who's uh, got a portfolio of customers, and I want to bring open systems to the table, take me through that. I mean, am I asking the questions? What are some of those questions I should be asking? What's my engagement posture look like to my customer? Mm -hmm. Ed, that's a great question. I've been to a number of events and, and sat through you know, kind of advanced training seminars. And, and at the beginning of a seminar, you, you have somebody on stage saying, talk about security categories. If you talk about security, then you have a pathway to sell anything else you know, on there. And then at the end of the event, all the SD-WAN guys were sitting on a stage saying, talk about SD-WAN. It's the glue that holds everything together. And if you can sell SD-WAN, it'll give you pathway to everything else. And meanwhile, I'm in the back of the room smiling, just wondering, what if you didn't have to pick? What if you could just have a wide open conversation with your customer around application origins and remote users and how you're unifying you know, security and application performance and routing intelligence for any application or origin to any type of user trying to access it, how are you addressing that? And that's really at the core of what open systems has developed for its clients is that is that type of agility and flexibility where you're where you're never trapped and and opening up considerations around new and emerging threats and capabilities that you should be looking at where if it's not the time for you today we've still already designed it in for you so when you're ready it's there for you now the real question on the reps mind is always asking those basic questions saying how do I make money from this hmm. and you know which is essentially you know money making certainly is a great channel formula it's indirect sales for you guys but also you have to have a couple table stakes one it's got to be a product that can be sold right the delivery has to be um, uh, elegant enough where there's margin for the partner mm -hmm. and benefit the customer absolutely so the money making is certainly a big part of not only just trust as a, as a supplier to the part to the channel but also as a, an engine of innovation and, and wealth creation. Mm -hmm. What's your pitch there? How do, how do I make it money? Well, as a managed <laughs> services model, that's always the beauty is you get to configure to the requirement of the individual customer. So no one's force fed capability they don't need or an oversubscription for what they might need in a year. So just in case they want to, we're able to right size and, and, and deliver the capability that's, that's specifically configured to the individual customer level, but then also show them that they have a pathway to capability um, laid out for them and, and integrated and modern, like we never go end of life, we never get shelved, this is something that is, is living, breathing, you're never buying boxes uh, again and service chaining and handling the complexity. So, so we make that very simple. For our partners, you know, in categories around security and SOC and managed services and SIM and CASB and you know, these are things that you know, they've they hear about, but they don't know how to address them with their customers. And now open systems makes that very simple because we fully integrated capabilities around those categories and many more into so a So one of the service. psychology I was just reading from that as a, as a rep, if I was a rep, I'd be like saying, hmm, I don't have to overplay my hand. I can get a, uh, an engagement with my customer. I right. can get a feel for the service, grow into it because it's the managed service mm -hmm. and go from there. It's not a big ask. Right. It, it's instant. Alignment. 
Yeah, it, oftentimes what we do is a timing issue. Somebody just bought boxes in one category. So fine, we'll coexist with that. We, we, we sit in parallel and in framework with current investments and subscriptions that happen to be in place. But we give them a pathway that allows them to integrate it into u fully unified. And I like to really point this out is that we don't go to a customer and say, what do you need? We'll build it for you. It's, it's what do you need? We've already built it. We just want to know how we configure it for you to match up to, to what your requirements are and maybe suggest some areas um, that should be a part of that consideration as well based upon 20 plus years of doing this with customers that we already have under our belt. Yeah, it gives them confidence of the operating model of say cloud and manager. It's been around, it's proven. Mm -hmm. And now you have a model there. Final question for you, Dave, is okay, what's, um, my fear might be, are you going to be around tomorrow? Because, you know, People want to know, are you going to be there for the long haul? Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your answer to that? I mean, we're a 30 year old security company founded out of Zurich and you know, started in 1990 and transi transitioned to as a service in 1999 and have grown on the backs. We're customer funded. Um, so this is as battle tested and bulletproof as anything that they may have in their portfolio. And it shows extremely well in front of a customer. I, I spend more time talking to partners saying, be the first one in the door to talk about open systems with your customer. Don't let somebody else do it. Um, you know, or, or certainly use the mindfulness of, a, of the net of capabilities of open systems and, and don't go in narrow viewed because if somebody comes in behind you with our conversation, I don't think you're going to like what happens. One more question just jumped in my head and they reminded me of, we were talking before we came on camera around how channels are great leverage, great win-win, but we're in a modern era of computing, delivery of services, mm -hmm. cloud has certainly shown that, a whole nother wave coming behind it. Security obviously the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. You've been in the channel business for a while. What's your take on what's happening in the channel business? Because it is changing, there's opportunities there. What's your take? Yeah, this is the second company I've, I've had the opportunity to introduce into the channel and, and, and this one is a, is a lot of fun, I'll say that. But the channel's traditionally thought of in more of a telecom space and for, for many of our partners, that's where they've been literally for decades in some cases is, is selling uh, you know, technology, but as is selling connectivity rather in networks. Um, but what has happened is that technology has found its way into the network layer, a and because of cloud and SaaS app origins and remote users from you know, coffee shops or the cube or or a customer site accessing those applications, it's created a a massive set of diversity in you know, requirements on the IT team at the enterprise and how do you accommodate for all of that? How do you keep up with it and maintain it? And now, you know, th these things transitioning from these CapEx buying boxes and maintenance agreements and rotating those out and that, that model is constantly being, you know, assaulted in the same way that we've seen so many services that we have come to our house. That we, you know, nobody digs a well for water anymore. Yeah. I've, got a, I've got a water company or makes their own electric power plant in the backyard. I've, I've got the electric company. Everything's as a service. Absolutely. Dave Nudy, so head of channels at Open Systems. Thanks for sharing the insight on your partner network. Congratulations, thanks for coming in. Pleasure, thank you. I'm John Furrier here in Cube Conversation in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.